This is a game of three in a row played in four dimensions. It is a game with few simple rules and a lot of dimensions to strategize in. As an example, can you see here who won? Would you like to learn how to save it? And would you like to learn how to play this game? Give me a couple of minutes and you will see what a Sudoku grid has to do with four dimensions. Perhaps we should start at the beginning. This is a game of three in a row played in two dimensions. But this is not tic-tac-toe. Here we put our three pieces by turns and then we move them by these rules. Okay, this is not that exciting. Let's go to 3D. For a game of three in a row played in 3D, we need a 3x3x3 three by three by three cube instead of a 3x3 three three square. But with so many new boxes, the first player would always win. So we need a third player just to maintain the game balance. But here is the thing. To play it on a screen or a piece of paper, we need to project the 3D cube to a 2D plane. So we are going to separate the floors and put them one next to each other. But we have to keep in mind that they are on different floors, even if we see them together. As an example, a repeating position like the axis would be a vertical line. Can you see that? So, if your cube is three squares one on top of the other, a 4D hypercube would be three cubes one next to the other. Even if we cannot imagine it, we could draw them together and we would know that they are on different hyperdimensional floors. And of course, following our trend, we must invite another player in just for balance. So, it seems like a stretch, but hopefully, now you can see how a Sudoku grid can be a representation of a 3x3x3x3 4D hypercube. The next question is, can you see which three pieces are in a row and which are not? Even with good spatial reasoning, it is quite hard to see the diagonals on the hypercube. But here's a trick. Take any three 3x3 three three squares that are on a row, vertical, horizontal, or diagonal, and imagine that as a 3D cube in your head. Maybe that way is easier to visualize how the left examples are all winning, but none on the right. It does take time, so pause if you need it. You may have noticed that this video is not called a four-dimensional game. It is the n-dimensional game because you can repeat this process for any number of dimensions and you can always play with the same rules. Although I must suggest, for your sanity, starting with 4D or even 3D, it gets chaotic on higher dimensions. Now we must talk about movement. Because remember, this is no n-dimensional tic-tac-toe. Do you remember the rules from when we were back on 2D? So we can extrapolate those rules to any number of dimensions if we say you must move along a three in a row. And here are some examples of movements in 4D. It is hard to see, I know. So take your time and maybe try finding the three in a row that each movement would move along. But of course, the only way to really get it is by playing yourself. Would you like to give it a try? There is a version of this game online and completely free. You can go there using the link in the description and please keep in mind that it is still an early version and there might be some bugs. Once you're inside, you can choose the dimensions you want to play in. And then start a game. Remember, for D, four players. But you can play with a computer if you are not enough people. Here. To play, simply drag your pieces in your turn. First will be circles, then crosses, and triangles. The star would be the computer. This would be a hint that someone might win on the next round, but we're going to let the star handle this one. As you can see, we also have hints for movement, and if you're there, you can turn them off here. Finally, and only if you're getting comfortable enough, you can try adding a little spice with the symmetry 
we can rotate and reflect the hypercube in 4D. Take a look. Even though it looks different, it is the same game, so we can keep playing. If this is something you might find interesting, please give it a try and feel free to leave some feedback. And if you want even more, try falling through the mathematical rabbit hole, where we will chase interesting mathematical ideas through the context of this game. <laughs>